Now we continue with the second iteration of our critical path cam design problem. Um, we still have the same um, statement of, of motion, the same problem statement. We want to accelerate the follower from 0 to 10 inches per second. We want to maintain a constant velocity of 10 inches per second of that follower for half a second. We want to then decelerate the follower to zero velocity and return the follower to the start position. The cycle time is exactly one second. Previously, we did this with four polynomials. We're not given any further information. Um, if we study these requirements carefully, we see that the motion outside the constant velocity is not specified. So let's take a closer look. Um, what is specified? Well, it's definitely specified that we maintain a constant velocity of 10 inches per second for half a second. But outside of that critical information that we have here, everything else is really um, preparation for that. For example, we need to accelerate the follower from 0 to 10 inches per second. Then we're there. And then afterwards, we're going to decelerate the follower to zero and then return the follower to the start position. So you could say that the acceleration, the deceleration, and the return, um, all of those are really just, well, the first one is to prepare us for the constant velocity. And the second piece, this deceleration and the return, is also to prepare us for the constant velocity. Um, moreover, only the constant velocity portion is specified in terms of the amount of time that we're going to be doing that for. All the others are left up to us. So let's see how we can reduce this from four polynomials to a smaller number of polynomials. Let's consider simplifying the design by handling the entire CAM design with two polynomials. One polynomial for the constant velocity portion. The second polynomial to take us from the end of the constant velocity segment back to the beginning of it. Okay, so if we look back here, we're going to have two polynomials. That first polynomial is going to handle this constant velocity portion. After that, we're going to decelerate, return, and accelerate to start again. So all of these, this, the deceleration, the return, and the acceleration will all be handled by a second polynomial. We will assume two segments, right? So we have two polynomials, two segments, where um, beta one for the first polynomial is 180 because that's exactly one half the time. We've got to recall that every cam design involves 360 degrees of motion and since our cycle time is one second and the constant velocity is for a half a second, if one second is equal to 360 then a half a second is equal to 180. So both of our betas are going to be equal in this instance because we'll have 180 for that first polynomial, that's the constant velocity portion, and 180 for the second polynomial, which will go from the end of the constant velocity back to the beginning of it, ready to start again. These are what the profile will look like for our position and our velocity and our acceleration. When we start, um, our velocity is constant, and so our position will just increase. And then after that, we have return, and we don't know exactly what this um, function is going to look like in here. We haven't talked about that part yet. Uh, but we know it will have to take us from some position back to zero here. Um, and our velocity will need to go from um, 10. It may do something, but it's going to need to end at 10. Um, and our acceleration is going to have to start at zero and end at zero. So let's look at the boundary conditions. We usually like to use a table for our boundary conditions. Um, the motion requirements for the constant velocity straight line section. Okay, so this is just the this is just the table of boundary conditions for that constant velocity portion. Notice we always go from zero to beta for whatever polynomial we're working with. Every polynomial gets its own table. So zero to beta one or zero to 180 degrees. Our s equals zero in our um, at the start, and our velocity should be equal to 10 inches per second. We're not going to include any additional boundary conditions. Now that, well, let me say a little bit more about that. Um, looking at this, you may have initially said, well, if we're doing constant velocity, then I'll set my acceleration equal to zero. At the end, if I've traveled 10 inches per second for half a second, then I should be at 5, s equals 5 inches here. Uh, my velocity should still be 10 and my acceleration should be 0. So I could, I'll could i have six boundary conditions. Um, I could see um, 
I mean, that's logical, uh, but what we need to remember is that um, this is a constant velocity portion of the cam design. Constant velocity means that our velocity is equal to a constant, um, meaning that the power of that equation for velocity should be um, zero. Um, now, we normally don't start with a velocity, we start with a position equation and then we differentiate. Each time we differentiate, we're losing one uh, number off of that power, right? And so if the velocity equation needs to have a power of zero, then the position equation should have had a power of two. I'm sorry, a power of one. And so when the position gets differentiated, that one is going to become a zero. And so if the position equation needs to have power of one, then it should have two boundary conditions, and these are those two boundary conditions. Now, these aren't the only two boundary conditions we could have used. We could have used S equals zero here, and a V equals 10 in this location, and then it would just be those two. But these two are also um, sufficient. Since we want constant velocity, the equations for the previous table are going to be S equals C0 plus C1X. Notice we're using an x here, and that x is equal to our theta over beta. Um, so then our velocity, if we differentiate our position equation, we should have the c0 will go away and we'll have c1x dot. In this case, we're differentiating with respect to time. A little bit different than what we did previously. We were differentiating in uh, previous sections of this chapter, we were differentiating with respect to theta. And so our velocity is equal to c1x dot. What is x dot? That x dot right here, remember I was saying that this x is actually a theta over beta. So the x dot should be theta dot over beta. What's our beta? Our beta was pi or 180. What's our theta dot? Our theta dot is the angular velocity at which the cam is rotating. This cam uh, makes a full rotation in, I believe, um, let's see what we had here. Our cam makes a full rotation in one second, so our theta dot should be 2 pi over 1. And of course, we're talking about radians there, and so here's our x dot, theta dot over beta, where beta is 180 or pi, and theta dot is 2 pi over 1 second. So that's our x dot. So going ahead and solving for those two constants, um, the two constants being C0 and C1, we find that our resulting position equation is S equals 5 theta over beta. Notice when theta is equal to 0, our uh, S will be equal to 0. And when theta is equal to beta, our S will be 5, just as it should. For the second segment, um, this is the deceleration and return to start constant velocity again. Um, that uh, segment, that polynomial also has a beta of 180. This would be beta 2. So again, each polynomial starts at 0, goes to some beta, in this case 180. And we would need to fill in this table. Um, our s should be 5 because if we travel at 10 inches per second for half a second, we'll end up at uh, s equals 5 inches. Our velocity um, just ended in the previous case at 10, so we need to have 10 here or we'll have a discontinuity. And our acceleration should be equal to zero because we just came off of a constant velocity portion. At the end of this polynomial, our s should be back at zero, ready to start again with a constant velocity portion. Our velocity should be 10, so there's no discontinuity between uh, where we end up with the velocity and where we have to begin that constant velocity portion. And of course, our acceleration should be equal to zero again. So this polynomial has six boundary conditions, and it's going to have a fifth order uh, position equation. Um, here's our generic position equation, again using x's. Okay? And so we differentiate this position equation, we get the following velocity equation, the following acceleration. Okay. Now notice, <clears throat> there is no x double dots. An x double dot would mean that we had a theta double dot, and our cam is not accelerating. Uh, while we do have a theta dot, we do not have a theta double dot. Okay. And so what is the x dot for this particular polynomial? Well, again, it's equal to theta dot over beta. What's our beta? Our beta for this polynomial is also 180. And our theta dot doesn't change. And that theta dot is 2 pi over 1. And so this x dot ends up being equal to 2. The resulting equation, once we solve for the various constants, perhaps using a matrix to do so, um, this is our equation for position. 
So here's the result. Um, a two-segment design is smoother uh, with a lower max velocity and acceleration than the previous four-segment design that um, I talked about in the previous video. And so we see our position equation starts at zero. It rises um, with a slope equal to 10 inches per second. And then there is a return and we're prepared to start again at zero. Here's our velocity. It was constant at 10 inches per second. And then it dove down and came back. Um, acceleration started at zero because, of course, we had a constant velocity. And, and you see what happens with our acceleration and our jerk profile. So this is a preferred design. Um, takes a little bit of thinking at the start to see that we can do this design with just two polynomials and that's great. We're always trying to minimize not just the number of boundary conditions for any given polynomial, but we also are trying to minimize the number of polynomials in any um, CAM design. Next we will talk about sizing the CAM. Thank you for watching.